Hello, thank you for taking the time to watch a quick webinar of Feedlot Solutions version 6 US Pro. Today I will be giving you a quick walkthrough of how the program works. This is our main management piece. All of our systems are 100% Windows based and database systems. This means all of your information is stored in the program as long as you use Feedlot Solutions. You have the opportunity to take close out lots and make them inactive so they no longer appear on drop downs or reports. But you can go back and make them active again so that if you need to reprint reports, you can. The first thing you'll notice is all the shortcut icons. These can be intimidating. Under Tools, you can left click on Toolbar to make those disappear until you get acquainted. You'll notice, though, as you hit on every drop down, you will see the shortcut icons are listed, so before long you become familiar. The second thing that I would note is this program is set up to be very user friendly. Everything is left to right, top to bottom, in the order as you will do entries in the program. Notice under File, your Backup and Restore functions, a Snoop no mode, which is a play mode, import functions, if you need to move deads and transfers from the Kettle Medical System, Micro Beef Bunk Reader, Lextron Bunk Reader, Feed Truck Weight Indicator, Feed Importer, we interface with Digistar and Waytronics feed scales. Exporting to AgSpan, Cattle Hedging, Linus. We also interface with QuickBooks and a AS400 accounting system. FBS Networking is our Feedbunk Solutions program. If interested, please just ask and we can send you a demonstration. All of your day-to-day -day entries are done under the Edit tab. You'll notice that they're categorized, setup, feed maintenance, animal management, invoicing and billing, and finally feed. You will do these in this order. Setup. This screen is your contacts. You can have unlimited contacts, lots, pens, rations, ingredients. As you build your contacts, they can be as general or specific as you wish. Each entry will then have a category, buyer, source, employee, owner, destination, and supplier. You can enter as much detail as you need, and later if you would like to fill in more information, you can click on the hand and eraser, or go under edit, and click on modify, and simply make your adjustments and hit save. Next under setup are pens. Pens are physical locations within the program. You can move cattle from one pen to another very simply. You can also have one lot in several pens. My example for that is a sick pen. Lots are your groups of animals that you wish to track for closeout purposes. You'll notice you can enter numbers or letters for your lot name the ownership name, your yardage, which is automatically calculated and can be individual for each lot, your weight method, which can be average daily gain, dry matter conversion, or California net energy, and your companies. Here you're able to have multiple owners by selecting the percentage and hitting the down arrow key. All of your options to add new or modify are listed under edit or you're able to use the shortcut icons above. Notice to scroll through to get to the last record. Binoculars are to search. The page with the corner flipped over is for adding anything new. The hand and eraser to modify. A green check mark, which is to save. A red X to cancel. This will show you your inventory of that lot. And this will take you, the Rolodex takes you back to the contact screen in case you need to add anything new. Next under setup are your items. Items are considered anything that you wish to put in. Typically it will be non-feed expenses such as processing and medical. 
We allow for you to be as general or specific in this area as you wish. To begin with, you may just have processing, vet, inspection as you see. If you choose, you can add new and actually list out your specific drugs. For example, Draxin, units would be put in as milliliters. You can put the cost and the markup and any quantity on hand. Or LA300, units would be CC. And so as you expense those out, they would be charged as such. Next under setup are your postmortem and animal type. Both give you the opportunity to enter as much detail as you would like so that later for analysis you can go back to those features. For example, your postmortem and culling, you can just have general, postmortem, general, culling, or you can be as detailed as putting in pneumonia, broken leg, so on and so forth. Animal type is very much the same way, steers, heifers mixed, or go down and put in your animal types as black Angus yearling heifer, for example. Next tab is feed maintenance. This area allows you to build your components, which are your ingredients. Once those are built, you can build your rations. And any time that you need to do a feed recalculation, you can use this wizard. The component screen allows for you to build each ingredient with its cost, adding any markup or margin as you need, dry matter percentage, net energy maintenance and net energy gain, and your inventory if you wish. Next, you'll build your rations. You'll notice in the ration screen that you can list your ration as numbers or you can put in that this is ration 315 2016 starter and put in the details. You can have an, addition, an additional handling fee per ton on the ration if you would like. Once you build your ingredients, they must total 100%. Once they do, your breakdown of that ration will be shown below as guidance. The feed recalculation wizard, as I discussed, allows for you to go in and recalculate your feed costs if you forgot to change them or if you just need to go in and recalculate. It also allows for you to delete several feed entries at one time. The next tab is your animal management. When you go in to buy cattle, this is what your screen looks like. Any of the areas that you see the three dots allows for you to select that and it will take you to that screen. Therefore, making you not have to exit out of this screen, you can work and complete directly from this area. At the bottom, you have estimated gain per head per day, estimated final weight, and estimated cost per gain. This will then give you a simple projection based on the information entered. Next is to sell cattle. Sell cattle covers all the areas of shipping, postmortem, culling. When you select a lot and go to your pen, it will automatically show you which animals are in that pen. You then have the opportunity to select whether it's shipping, postmortem, or culling. Any time that you need to make modifications to your purchases or sales, you can simply go into these areas, update cattle purchases or sales. You simply will select the entry, click on update, and make your modifications. So it's very easy to go in and update or modify. Pen transfers, again, are physical movements of cattle. You select the date, you select the source pen, it will then show you the lot and how many head are located. You will put in the number to transfer and the destination pen, and those cattle will be moved. You can also do entering new weights and a lot sorting wizard. 
The lot sorting wizard allows for you to move cattle between lots. Invoicing and billing covers entering your lot expenses and making payments against the accounts receivable. You have three different options for entering your expenses. The enter lot expense allows for you to select the lot, hit new, put in your item, select your category, put in your quantity, and it will calculate your price. Or you can put quantity as one and enter your total price. If you would like to do more than one entry at a time, there is a function called population expense. This allows for you to do several items at one time with much more flexibility, being able to apply it to all lots in the feed yard or a specific lot and do it on a per head basis or a per lot basis. This can save much time. Next is your feed screen. Our program is very flexible. If you would like to sit down once a week and do all of your entries, you can do so. You left click on the date, go back to March 8th for example, select your pen. You'll notice on the right hand side the lot that is in that pen will appear with the head count. You simply select which ration you would like to feed, enter the amount of pounds. You'll notice that the program automatically puts in what the body weight percentage is. Once you left click on feed pen, it will then turn that pen red. This is a very nice visual so that if you are going back and forth, you can see where you left off. You also have the ability to import feed from this screen from an interface of your feed truck and you can directly go into your daily feed report from your feed screen. Next are the reports. This program categorizes each report to help guide you in figuring out which report is best for what you're looking for. You'll notice cattle reports, feed reports, grain banking, expense items, receivables where you can do your invoices and statement of accounts, your payables, and your clients. Let me show you a few of my favorites. If you would like any of these in further detail, we can sure email them to you. The pen inventory is one of the most common. You can select it by pen or by lot, and you can also choose to show you the wait date. You can click OK to preview, and it will simply show you your pens, your lots, and the total animals in the feedlot. The yard sheet allows for you to select a time period. We're going to go back to October, do dry matter or as fed, and this will give you some consumption. It will show you the lots, the head count, the days on feed, the days on ration, and the consumption would be shown here. This report will only show you up to what you have entered for feed. This is demo data. Next is the cattle inventory report. This can also be by pen or lot and be exported to a CSV format. Many people use this as a banker's report. I'm going to go down and show you an example of the invoicing. Again, very flexible on when you do your invoicing. If you have cattle that go out and it's not the 1st or the 15th, that's okay. You can go ahead and invoice them on any day that you need to. You can simply right click, deselect, choose your group that you'd like to invoice, select your dates. You can print feed list if you would like that on a report. You can also print your invoices if you'd like that to show. You have several different formats to do for invoicing. Summary period, which will show you the period you've selected. Summary period to date, which will show you the period, as well as a column of to date information. 
a component invoice, which is in a landscape format and shows you each component and bills it that way, and a cost per pound of gain invoice. When I click OK to preview, this is what the period to date information looks like, who it's to, the invoice information of where those cattle are, the estimated average daily gain, your cost per pound, estimated break even, as well as all the summary of information and a total due at the end of the invoice. Your second page will go through and show you any feed that has been applied, and your third page is the lot expense listing. Both of those are optional reports on the invoice. Next is the Analysis tab. This gives you the opportunity to go in and do closeouts, prospective closeouts, yard snapshot, and additional analysis for your lot. Closeouts can be done so long as animals are completely sold out of the lot. You can do these as many times if you need to go back and change parameters or review. A prospective closeout can be done at any time and it will basically sell those cattle out as of today's date. You also have the optional parameters if you choose. Here are some examples of the summary closeout, the detailed closeout, and lastly, the yard snapshot. Thank you for taking the time to view Feedlot Solutions version 6.